In motion, Ryan Davis. They'll play action to him. Roll Stedham out. Flip back to the left. Well, Johnson wide open. Bye-bye. At the 50, at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Blockers ahead, 10, 5, dies with a pylon. Touchdown, Auburn! Turn the lights out in Athens, Georgia. Brown will throw to the right. He fades it into the right corner. One-handed grab. Off the chub, toss it back to Fromm. Oh, he's got a man deep. They go flea flicker. And there's Godwin. He caught it at the 20. He veers left. Touchdown. And is it intercepted? It is. Tyreek McGee. First play of the game. Here comes pressure. We chase him out of the pocket. Oh, my goodness. We clobbered him. He lost the ball. We pick it up and run it into the end zone. Touchdown. J.R. Reed picked it up on the two and just scored. Prom sets up, pump fakes, throws to the back corner of the end zone. And Wims makes a great catch for the touchdown. We're going to run it with Chubb through traffic across the 50, far sideline, 40, 30, race to the end zone, 50, 10, 5, touchdown, Nick Chubb. Throws it deep, caught by Crumpton, Crumpton at the 50, he'll go all the way, straight out of Crumpton, Crumpton into the end zone. Thanks, Claude. Sorry about being late, guys. I was going to be on time, but Claude made me shave, so kept me kept me a few minutes later. So we'll begin today on a, a little more of our mental and physical prep uh, for uh, Auburn. They're playing at a really high level, probably one of the hottest teams in college football, if not the hottest team in college football. they got good players on both sides of the ball. they got really good specialists, one that may be the best in the country, um, and uh, they're playing at a high level. they got a good football team. Coach, if uh... – Karrion Johnson can't play. Does that change your game plan at all? Well, I think you got to be smart. You know, you got to understand where a team's strengths and weaknesses are, and they've got a lot of strengths. They've got ways to create running game that Gus has always done. They got a quarterback who don't mistake him for a runner because he can run the ball when you least expect it. When you start running the quarterback, it creates a uh, really tough dynamic. So they've got other ways to get carries. Um, I fully expect him to play, and we'll have to deal with it either way. Kirby, I know you could probably say this any game, but how important is the play of your defensive line this game or defensive front? Yeah, the line of scrimmage, anytime you play an SEC game, is is trench warfare, as we call it. It's big physical guys going after it. I think the line of scrimmage is really critical in this game, both sides. Uh, we got to do a good job getting some knockback. I don't know that it's our defensive line having to play better. Obviously, everybody as a team has, has got to play better. We got to tackle better, we got to keep our edges better. Um, and we got to be able to run the ball better on offense. How much can revenge really or avenging a loss be a factor when you're trying to get your guys motivated? I mean, that's, that's, that fires you up pregame and that gets you all excited. But when the toe meets leather, it's about striking people. It's about hat, hat speed. It's about blocking, tackling. It's about having composure. It's about having discipline. And it really doesn't revert back to who won the previous game. It, it, it matters a lot more about what you do in that game, what you do in that game, because the other game is, is past history. I, I think you should prepare the same, regardless of your record, regardless of a revenge factor, and you be real consistent in your approach so that the players are, are able to understand it's important for, to prepare right every game. And we don't say, oh, this game's more important than the other, because it's the next game, and the next game's always the most important game. We'll take on those challenges this week, prepare our team to play, and uh, get our guys ready to go out. And, and we want to be at our best when our best is needed, and it's certainly needed this week. Tyree, come on, bro. You can't break tradition. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, please. Oh, me. Yeah, get, off. Day. get off the hold. Get off. <laughs> this is my song. Red with this one. This one. This is a hustling music. What would I do to him? What would I do? Come on, Kerry. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I got you, I got you. Hey, corner, get ready to corner. Hey, get ready to corner.
I'm a real OG. I made this helmet. You feel me? What you like, 17? <laughs> You straight Ben? You good? You got hit in the McNuggets? Yeah. Come on. Go put some ice on it. But now nah, I'm gonna tell you funny stuff. <laughs> ben was like, oh. I said, what you got? You got hit in the McNuggets? He said, uh-uh, I got kicked. <laughs> I said, we all right, come on, let's go put some ice on it. Yeah, we know my boy Mike though. You know where you at? We out here trying to work though. Trying to eat. excited uh, to have earned the right to be here. I'm excited for our seniors, and I'm excited about this game uh, tomorrow. It's a big testament to our seniors. I think they've done a tremendous job leading this team and this program um, back to where it belongs, and uh, they get an opportunity to go out uh, tomorrow and compete on what I consider to be the biggest stage in college football, and I'm excited for that opportunity. I think playing in the Georgia Dome certainly helped last year to open in that place, but this obviously is a step above that. Um, but yeah, this is my first time. I mean, I actually, walking in here, I just missed a call from Dan Quinn, so I was hoping he was going to give me some pointers on how to play well in here. But uh, uh, this is our first time being in it. I know it would be the same way really with Auburn. So you know, even a lot of our high school kids, a lot of times they, they played in the Georgia Dome. So it wasn't as much of a wow factor, the really good programs, but that's not the case in this scenario. So uh, we're very it's going to be beneficial to get to walk through and get to go out there and get all that out of the way. I'm excited because I think an SEC championship is uh, one of the greatest honors you can get as both a coach and a player. Anything no. like that. No. Georgia and Auburn in the SEC championship game, winner has a spot in the playoffs. Again, another championship game that should be affected by an injury. Carry on Johnson, banged up, bad shoulder. I think that's going to affect Auburn's offense. So I think Georgia wins the rematch. I'm going Bulldogs. Oh, man. I know. I'm going to oh, man. man. Somebody got to do it. Why me and you disagreeing so much? We, we should got, talk before this. I got this. Auburn because one of my players, Carlton Davis, okay. number six, yep. yeah. going to lock down anything on that side of the ball. Even though I got another player on, on Georgia, <laughs> uh, uh, Baker. You know, DeAndre Baker is another guy who played for me as well. Yeah. But I got my money on Auburn. Okay. Forget about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Georgia, and I'm upset because a real boring game. Really? I, I, really? I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking Georgia all week because of the emotion of the game and yeah. payback. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna have an attitude about them. And then Nick Saban had to sit here with, with his crimson jacket on and talk about <laughs> Auburn the way he talked about them right. in, in a very glowing manner. Yep. And it flipped me over back to Auburn. So I'm going really? Auburn gets in the second time. Okay. Beats Georgia. I told you something on Monday. Remember what I told you? You've made it from August to now. 15, 1,600 kids try to get where you're at right now. And now there's two teams standing. There's 85 boys left, 85 guys, and then you get to call yourself a champion. There's nothing that can happen out there that we can't handle. Nothing. Everybody be ready to play. You got me. Everybody, let's go. Closure and physicality. That's all we talked about all week. Closure and physicality. Ain't nobody should be anxious or nervous. Now, ain't many chances in life you get a second chance. You got a second chance. Every one of you watch them, watch them tapes. I'm going to show them who we are. 
We're going to dominate our space now all game long. I'm telling you right now, guys, this is our time. This is your time. Yeah. You deserve this. We believe in you. Every one of you earned this right. You do it for 60 minutes in the game. It don't matter what happens early. It's 60 minutes in the game. You got to go out here and show the world who we are. You understand? Execute, discipline, composure, and physicality for 60 minutes. setting is brand new, but the prize remains the same. An affirmation of gridiron greatness by earning the title Champion of the Southeastern Conference. In a storied rivalry that dates all the way back to 1892, here comes something unique. A rematch for the ages. Just a few weeks ago for Georgia, it seemed their wildest dream was coming true. To the four and into the end zone, touchdown! An undefeated season was on their mind. And then, the Deep South's oldest rivalry kicked off. And for the Bulldogs, <laughs> that dream turned into a nightmare. The Tigers' improbable mid-season renaissance has been fueled by their indomitable spirit and iron wheel. Carry on, there's the jump pass, touchdown! But this year, in this, the most demanding of conferences, it turns out beating your most ancient of rivals once is not enough. For Georgia and Auburn, <laughs> it's bragging rights be damned. Take two is for the championship of the SEC. And so it brings us to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's the SEC championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers for the 122nd time. The Deep South's oldest rivalry, and we've got a rematch for the ages here in Atlanta today. Take a look at the college football playoff rankings. Clemson and Miami has a date later tonight. So does Wisconsin and Ohio State. Oklahoma's taking care of their business right now, and that brings us to Auburn and Georgia here for the SEC title. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. Garrett starts back in the spring. It works its way through summer, and there's 14 teams in this league that have the dream of making it to the first Saturday in December here in Atlanta. And in this case, it's not only for the conference championship, it's for a spot in that final four. And it's a rematch. How about hmm. that? How cool is that? You know, Brad, for the first 11 weeks of this season, I think the story of college football was... Georgia. I think it was. And then for the last three weeks, the story has been... Auburn. Yeah. How good are they? <laughs> are they that good at home? Or are they that good playing away from home? We will find out. And how good are they with their top tailback? Kind of a question mark. Carryon Johnson's been the biggest story this week, I think, with the exception of the coaching carousel, right? I think you're right. But, you know, for Carryon Johnson to be Carryon Johnson, he plays physical. He doesn't use his legs. He uses that straight arm. When you come up to make a tackle, he makes you pay. If he's not able to use that arm, even like he did against Alabama last week, how good will this offense be without that running attack? That's the big story all week. Well, and the big story and the big question mark, and we'll take you back and show you why he's a question mark health-wise. Yeah, it happened, we think, maybe right here when Ronnie Harrison put that helmet on that arm, that left arm, but then later, Carrion Johnson felt a twinge and kind of shut it down. And then all week it was, how good is Carrion? And of course, no one's going to tell you how good he is, but I'm going to speculate this. As you watch him go off there last game, if that arm isn't falling off, 
he's going to play. He had 167 yards on the ground and a screen pass touchdown against Georgia the first time around. Let's take ourselves back now for Georgia three weeks ago. Top rushing team in the conference. Couldn't do anything against the Auburn defense. Everybody on the Georgia team has to play better. And if they do, their two stars will show up. They were shut down, but they can't block and run at the same time. For the offensive work, that offense has to be more varied, I agree, but they're not going to not use those guys. They have to be the stars. The first time these two teams met was in 1892, about three miles down the road at Piedmont Park. We've got a few more people in here for this one. 122nd time these two go at it next. Number six, Georgia. Number two, Auburn. Set to do battle here in the SEC Championship on CBS. Presented by Dr. Pepper in this beautiful palace that the Atlanta Falcons also call home. 26th SEC Championship game. Third different venue. Legion Field started it off. Georgia Dome for 23 seasons. And here come the 11-1 Bulldogs of Georgia. They're home in Athens, about 70 miles from here. And making their first SEC title game appearance since 2012. Well, is there some electricity in this building? Big Ben Nagani and Martin are back deep for Auburn. And Blankenship, as he's done so many times, knocks it out of the back of the end zone, so the Tigers will take over at the 25-yard line. Slayton in motion, play fake, and a throwback screen, and George is all over that. DeAndre Baker with the open field tackle. In a lot of football, that's the guys to send out. There's another slip screen to the other side, and again, Georgia is all over that. Dominic Sanders at time with the open field tackle. So, so far they've thrown two of those and they haven't gained anything. And to slow it down. Here's the first Wildcat of the day. Carry on Johnson's going to get off to Eli Stove. And Stove has got a first down. Auburn down. Second down and six. Play action. Stidham getting some pressure. Throws on the run. And he got his man down around the 12-yard line. Down to the 10-yard line. Stidham's going to go out to Slayton. He broke the tackle. Oh, oh boy, man. did he get hit by Roquan Smith. All right. Darius is going. Uh, I'd like to start going deep on these routes again. <laughs> Hot second and goal. Whoop, high snap. Fake the jump pass and now kind of head to the pylon. Not going to get there. Georgia drops him for a loss of one. Down they blitzed. Will they do it again? Stidham play fake. End zone touchdown. Nate Craig Myers in the SEC championship game. Here's a toss sweep. Nick Chubb. Chubb got a big opening. Whoa, one more guy, and he might have been really off to the races. Deshaun Davis tripped him up. I'm laughing because I talked to Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator on the field, before the game. I said, you think you'll see some toss sweeps? And he goes, well, maybe. But they've got to get all of this one. And here comes that rush from Auburn. Fromm hangs in, got it. Complete Nicole Hardman at a first down. Well, how about that throw? There they are, quick to the line. Keep it on the ground. Carry on Johnson broke one tackle, but not the second. Only got about a yard. Georgia delayed blitz. Stidham going to fire it out in the flat to his safety valve. Carry on Johnson, and Georgia runs him out of bounds. Roquan Smith. But a good job to keep him contained on that sideline. Straight four-man rush, swing pass out, carry on Johnson, Lorenzo Carter giving chase and brings him down. And it'll bring up the punting situation. Fromm trying to throw a screen, Sonny Michelle looking for blockers. Not going to get there, about a yard short. Ryan Davis in motion. Lorenzo Carter trying to put heat up the middle from the backside, and the ball is out. Still loose. Georgia might have this. Looked like Auburn was going to get on top of it, but I'm not sure now. 
Neither are the officials. It's Georgia Ball. Davin Bellamy's the guy that caused the fumble. And that saved three points. Remember, in game one, Georgia got a fumble to save three points as well, but this time it was forced instead of it. Bellamy comes right around the corner this time, and he beats a good football player in Austin Golson. Gets around it and retreats back inside. Boy, that clock, that mental clock, when you're in that position right there, that's how Jarrett Stidham started this season against Clemson, holding on to it a little too long, and a play that for sure is a sure three points ends up in a zero. Great stop by Georgia. Second force fumble by number 17, Davin Bellamy gives it back to the Georgia offense. And Nick Chubb, and Nick Chubb's still going. That's his best run of the day, a pickup of about 17. From Waits, fires late, got his man. Second time he's got one to Nicole Hardman for a first down. Play action, quick slant, and it's Nicole Hardman again. And Georgia's got something working. At the two-yard line, Sonny Michelle, the tailback in the eye. They fake the toss from Enzo, wide open, not a touchdown. Chubb closing the gap on Kevin Falk, about to move into third place, and he can maybe catch Darren McFadden. He's never going to catch Herschel, but to be number two to Herschel in the Georgia record Ain't books, bad. he'll take that yeah. any day. Auburn from the 25. Quick throw out in the flats to Ryan Davis. Georgia, nice job to hold him to about a three-yard game. That. <laughs> Second and seven. And carry on Johnson, his first carry since it looked like he was shaken up and he didn't have much on that one. DeAndre Walker was part of the reason. With pressure again. Stidham, they're getting some on him right now and he's got to get it rid of it and throw it out to the sideline. Of game time. Georgia from the 32. Sully Michelle got a block on the corner, got the edge. And Sully Michelle goes for about 20. Evidence with good pass protection. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Just flips it out to Sonny Michelle. Oh, what a move. Sonny Michelle down the sideline. Michelle inside the 20. Boy, did he plant his foot on that one. Field. Fromm's going to flip it out to Nick Chubb this time. And Nick trying to head to the end zone. has got it first and goal around the four. That was a different look at it. Blankenship, 13 out of 15 on the year. A 27-yard field goal is good. Both linebackers. There they come. It's Roquan Smith, and he's going to get to Stidham. And he'll give it off. Sonny Michelle trying to get to the edge. And he got about seven to open up the third quarter. Welcome back, everybody. Three. He'll get it again, and he ran by the first guy, and he's got a first down. We whipped the dog crap out of there. <laughs> and then Kirby was asked, how do you sit? Do you sit well with that? He said, well, when you perform the way we did, you're in the right to say whatever you want. It doesn't look like a blitz, does it? Nope. nope. A late one comes from Roquan Smith. And it's going to pay off because Trenton Thompson just got enough of an ankle on Stidham to bring him down. His holder's been there for every one of those points. Snaps a little high, and the kick is blocked. And Dominic Sanders has got it for Georgia. And this was just a mush rush up the inside. A huge play by the Georgia special team. Oh, by the way, everyone has reacted. It looked like it was just a push. Too much of a push inside over the middle. And then, late. yes, that was just too much of a rush inside. He got the block. Hawkins Muckle is the guy that got it. And a 31-yard field goal that you thought was a chip shot for that guy is blocked by Georgia. You know, that's six points. Remember in the for game one, 
Georgia left points on the field. Now Auburn has left six points on the field. That penalty gave Auburn their opening salvo at the 46-yard line. Oh, Roquan Smith says yeah. hello to Devin Barrett. Complimented, complicated by the second. <laughs> From quick play fake, and the throw complete. Out to Godwin, and Terry Godwin's got it at midfield and into Auburn territory. Could you? They fake the end around. Fromm's going to throw it short. Out to Miko Hardman. Well, great decisions by the quarterback, Jake Fromm. Second and four, Nick Chubb ran into his own guy, bounced off, and Nick Chubb on his way down inside the 25. Might have been the best thing he could have done is run into his own blocker. Looking for his 15th field goal of the year. Up and good. Georgia tacks on three more. Just hit the field goal. This one's going to be returnable, I think. They've been knocking him on the right sideline. Oh, man. Collision over there about the 22. Who's going to win the SEC title? we got 15 more minutes to figure it out. We'll return to Atlanta right after this message. And a word from your local station. 37-yard line with a first down. The give is to carry on Johnson. And the ball is out. Yep. And Roquan Smith has got it for Georgia. Another costly turnover. Much like the strip sack earlier of Stidham. And the dogs have got the ball back. Let's see who got it. Maybe Lorenzo Carter. Yep. Yes, he did. Carry on Johnson. Can't really say it's. We don't know which shoulder it is. We haven't been told a lot. Did not control that ball and protect it. You could see the ball swinging just as Carter's hand came out. So Bellamy and Carter, the two bookends who came back to Georgia for one more year and produced two turnovers in this game. They call themselves the Wolf Pack. The Dog Pack in this case has got the ball back at the 39 of Auburn. First down, and it's Fromm on the keeper. Broke one tackle, Jake Fromm! All the way to the 22-yard line. And he's gonna throw Fromm, back shoulder, got it! Godwin! Touchdown, flag down. Offside. Lined up in the neutral zone, number 91 of the defense. The penalty's decline. He's over the play as a touchdown. Well, I called for the 50-50 throw to the outside. Receivers down here on the bottom for Fromm. He's going the other way with it. And he's got it to Godwin again for two. Coming right inside. Here they come up the middle. Roquan Smith is going to force Stidham up in the pocket, and he throws incomplete. Intended for Craig Myers. Yeah. The previous possession, he just went from three to two with <laughs> past Darren McFadden, and now that? Herschel's the only guy in front. That's sensational. Couldn't happen to a better guy, You're right? You're right. It's the SEC championship, the Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers. Stidham end zone touchdown. Side pressure, the ball is out, Georgia has the football! From end zone, wide open, not a... He's got Georgia and Auburn, a rematch for the ages. Swift with Fromm in the backfield. He'll get the carry. DeAndre Swift, and he's fast, and he's maybe gone. DeAndre Swift, touchdown! <laughs> he saw the play break out. Here's the block by Wims right here. That's what broke it. Wims blocks, but at the top of the screen, watch Kirby. He's out of the screen. Wims is, here comes Kirby. He's going to come back in the picture. Hey, he was all SEC in 1998. Captain of the team. There he, is. There he goes. <laughs> and there goes DeAndre Swift. 75 yards in just three plays, and the freshman has given the dogs a three touchdown lead for the SEC championship.
Wait and see about his injury. Whether that'll he's got a month to heal. Jared Stidham going down at the 30 yard line. DeAndre Walker with the exclamation point on the Auburn quarterback. Georgia's a minute away from their 12th win of the season. It's only the third time in their history that would happen. One of Mark Rick's teams that won a Sugar Bowl went 12 and 1. Vince Dooley's undefeated national champions with Herschel Walker won 12 and lost none. And now Georgia's going to be 12 and 1 with the playoff looming. Third down and give me some help for Jared Stidham. And it's fourth down. What a difference 21 days makes if you're a Georgia fan. Stidham, last chance, and it's incomplete. Yeah, that kind of summed it up right there, didn't yep, it? it did. Somebody's a yard away from a record or something, and he said, why are you telling me that now? Well, he just got a bath. Kirby Smart in his second year has taken Georgia to the SEC championship. And they do it basically on their home turf here in Georgia. It's the championship in year two. Everybody else goes, uh, why can't you do that? A freshman quarterback, a great running attack, a tough defense, and the biggest win for Georgia in decades. And now what will the future hold for that guy? Will we see Gus Malzahn continuing to coach Auburn? Auburn or will he be at Arkansas? We know one thing, Kirby Smart's not going anywhere. And his resilient Georgia Bulldogs, a unanimous winner today. Allie's with the winning coach. Coach, congratulations on the first SEC championship for Georgia since 2005. What was the difference this time from it was three real weeks simple. ago? Composure and physicality. That's all it was about. Composure and physicality and great kids like this. 31 seniors on this roster with Nick Chubb being one of them. They trusted you. He came back for his senior year. What can you say about what they've meant to this program? Oh, it meant everything to this program. The leadership that he and Sony Michelle and the rest of these seniors have provided for us, it's impeccable. And this is an awesome win for our program, for our university, and a lot of people around the state of Georgia. Thank you, Coach. Congrats, Nick. You, you glad you came back? Thank you. I'm so glad I came back. I bet you are, guys. <laughs> Man, a few words, but a lot of yards. <laughs> a lot of yards. Second only to Herschel. Nick Chubb. And the Georgia Bulldogs are the Southeastern Conference champions for 2017. Now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. We could have picked a whole bunch of them, but you want to put a game away. And you got Sony Michelle nursing a little bit of a knee. You've worn Nick Chubb to the nub. And then you go, let's give it to the freshman. And DeAndre Swift is not only swift, he's fast too. 64 yards for a touchdown. This is how Scott Howard called it on the Bulldog Radio Network. Leading at 21 to 7 here in the fourth quarter. We move Godwin in motion from left to right out of the shotgun. Give it to Fromm. He's going to hand it off to Swift. Swift's got running room. Swift by the defense. 40, 30. They won't catch him. Go, Swift. Into the end zone. Touchdown. The freshman just ran it back to Philadelphia. Maybe not to Philadelphia, but at least to the left end zone. That was good enough. They're going to the playoffs, and there will be a party in this state tonight. 76,534 saw it. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary Danderson, Ali LaForce, Brad Nessler saying so long from Atlanta. Dogs win 28-7. College football postgame show powered by Ram is up next right after these messages. senior season as it were you would think it would be a little more mature as we go along here in the fourth year of the playoff let's see who number one is the number one team in the country the reigning national champion Clemson Tigers and, and that'll put them in the Sugar Bowl yep. and maybe get, they're not uh, revealing yet it's likely yeah likely. yeah but you would yeah. we would assume that'll put them in the Sugar Bowl which would talking to Dabo a couple days ago about would you like to go out to the Rose Bowl to avoid potentially if Alabama were there at four and he said no it's closer for our fans we don't want to have to deal with all that travel so they would obviously prefer the Sugar Bowl that's a big deal this year Joey I think unlike well, some we, years because it's just one week it's Monday to Monday you go cross country back have to get ready and go to that's especially in a situation where you might have two SEC teams in these rankings 
going to California for an SEC team now becomes an issue with the short rest. I think there are three teams that really had an argument to make to be number one. I think this is the right choice yeah. right here with their yeah. resume and who they beat, the eye test. Exclamation week, point yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. And the fact that, you know, they lost at Syracuse, but they didn't have Kelly Bryant 100%. He didn't play in the second half of the game. I think that's right that Clemson's number one. So, you know, we're going to see all of these teams, and all of them are really going to have big blemishes. Syracuse didn't win another game yeah. after it beat Clemson. Let's see who number two is just behind the Tigers and making the playoff for the second time, the Big 12 champion, Oklahoma Sooners. Probably the hottest team in America, and if their defense were better, I think they'd be the favorite right now, but we yeah. just don't know if you can count on that defense. Baker Mayfield more than likely is going to win the Heisman Trophy. I think it's the one team that nobody wants to play based no on doubt. what we've seen from that offense. And how about Lincoln Riley in his first year as a head coach? Being able to take the Sooners to a 12 and one year. And the defense midseason was a huge concern. Not as concerned about this defense now. Got the first touchdown yesterday. Played with a lot more confidence. Now, they're not going to come in and shut people down right. the way a Clemson defense does, the way a Georgia defense does, but they are now no longer a handicap for Oklahoma moving. Could forward. make an argument that they're the most dangerous team in this playoff because of Baker Mayfield and the way they score points. And they're peaking right now. Yeah. They're yeah. playing their best football yep. right now. Although, the, of the four teams here that will make it, three play great defense. I think Oklahoma is the one that you wouldn't say necessarily is great, but they have played their best football in the last four games. These are the top two teams, and I think it's interesting. Clemson at number one, in my judgment, has the best position group in all of college football in their defensive front. Oklahoma has the best complete one side of the ball unit. Yeah. The Oklahoma mm -hmm. offense is the most dominant in college football. Clemson won. Oklahoma two. Let's see who the Sooners will play in the national semifinal. We assume it's going to be Georgia, and it is. How about Georgia? Hasn't won a national championship since Herschel Walker in 1980. They have an opportunity to be one step away from that in the game against the Sooners. And how impressive was the adjustments by Georgia in the yes. game against Auburn? Yes. How impressive to go from getting dominated against an Auburn team looking like physically they couldn't hang. They make adjustments. Jake Fromm looked like he didn't recognize the Jake Fromm from the first time around. They ran the sweep. So smart to not go against the front four of Auburn in between the tackles. Spread them out, go wide. They were very impressive yesterday. They also got out Jordan Hare. That, 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 yeah. helped. Yeah. that helped in that game in a neutral site, and Jake Fromm played much better. And I think avenging their one loss on the year is a big deal because if you're Georgia now, you can say we beat everybody we played this season. And from an eye test standpoint, guys, very, very balanced, right? Dominant defense, deepest group of running backs the way, in the country. Heck of a game. Oklahoma, Georgia. Sure. That'll be fun. And the second consecutive year that we've had a freshman quarterback lead a team into the college football playoff. Jalen Hurts, now Jake Fromm. You're an 18-year-old kid out there, man. You got he yeah. practiced. Yeah. Jalen Hurts did that, and they came into the spring. They're talking about benching him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, and how about this too? Lincoln Riley's made the comments. We didn't have much trouble scoring against SEC defense wow. last year when they took on Auburn. Here, here we go. Uh, Oklahoma's seen nothing like the Georgia defense, and Georgia's seen nothing like the Oklahoma mm. offense. How much fun mm. is that? It's going to be. Can we get a drum roll fun. before number four comes out? Number four and going to the playoff to face Clemson will be. The Alabama Crimson Tide <laughs> for the fourth straight year. Is there, is there Street, somebody missing? Street, hey, no, come on, come Herbie. Set. Herbie, come back. I, I cannot. We, we I have a first the time come, come that back. two teams from the same conference are going to the playoff. Alabama's been in every playoff now, and we get Clemson, Alabama, part three. Let's make some picks now. David, we're going to start with you. Who wins this first college football playoff semifinal? I tell you what, it's going to be critically important for Georgia to handle the tempo early. I've gone back and forth just like everybody else probably in this game. I think Georgia's running game gives them enough. They force a turnover or two. They hold the football, keep, keep six on the sidelines yeah, so they yeah. can't score as much. 34-31 Georgia. Coach, who you got? I got, uh, listen, I love to pick Oklahoma because I get to shoot shotguns. <laughs> but, they, but they don't allow shotguns in Rose Bowl, so I have to go with Oklahoma for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's <Oklahoma>. make believe. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, 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 D, I'm rolling with David. I think 
because of Baker Mayfield's health, we don't know just where he is coming to this game. Is the fuel tank on full? Is it three fourths, three fourths the way up the up the, the mark? So we don't know right now. And I think less than 100 percent Baker Mayfield is not good enough to beat the Georgia Bulldogs. So I'm going with the Bulldogs. No, All right, two dogs, Bulldogs, one sooner, <laughs> and one big head. Good thing we don't have shotguns right in here. Eight. Coach has picked Oklahoma. We are not far away from the game broadcast. Chris Fowler is going to lead the way. It's going to be a great game, Chris. This must feel like a dream. All the leaves are brown. When that swirled in your mind at night. And the sky is green. And by day, stirred your soul. The playoff semifinals at the Rose Bowl. You're here not by way of wonder, but by acts of will. By walking on, rising up, and walking off with the high school. He's a surgeon. He's a magician. He's gonna get into the end zone. By standing your ground and gaining it with a pack of bulldogs unbound. 30, 30, right to the end of 10, 5, touchdown! This is no dream, but it is a vision. There's something sacred about this game and this stadium. An American tradition. The granddaddy of them all. Oklahoma and Georgia continue their magical ride in the playoff semifinals at the Rose Bowl. It's the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, the 104th edition of the granddaddy of them all. Postseason football invented right here. Today's matchup is between the second-seeded Oklahoma Sooners, champions of the Big 12, and the third-seeded Georgia Bulldogs, champions of the SEC for the first time in a dozen years. An experience to cherish and savor for Oklahoma and Georgia faithful. Just the second Rose Bowl game for each side. Georgia last year, New Year's Day 1943, when they brought a Heisman Trophy winner, Frank Sickwich, and they shut out UCLA. And that pigskin played a part, and it's made the return trip to Pasadena. Oklahoma brings in this season's Heisman Trophy winner, carrying the Pretenders sign. Lee Corso may have picked the Sooners just now, but he labeled them Pretenders preseason. Mayfield has been fueled by that. He's battled flu-like symptoms all week, but in the pregame, he seemed filled with his trademark fire and energy and ready to go with this semifinal game. Happy New Year from Pasadena, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit, my partner here working his 11th Rose Bowl game more than any other analyst Listen, ever. Congratulations. Honored, buddy. humbled, thank you very much. They're all special, but yeah. when it's a playoff semifinal game, leading off today's doubleheader with the nightcap and the All-State Sugar Bowl, that's the familiar game. Clemson and Alabama in the trilogy. This is the fresh matchup. Somehow, they've never played before. And they, they both have different storylines. The game later tonight is going to be a lot of fun to watch Nick Saban try to get revenge against the Clemson Tigers and Dabo Sweeney. This game does feel fresh. Think about Lincoln Riley. First year, he's been a head coach. He brings the Sooners out to Pasadena, and the same could be said for Kirby Smart, just his second year. He learned so much from Nick Saban, got his own program back at his alma mater, and here they are in the playoff out at the Rose Bowl. Pretty special. We can't wait. The beautiful stage is set. The storylines are rich. Time now for the National Anthem, U.S. Army Chorus, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Derek Shaw. Jose, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Still there, oh, say does that so. 
goosebumps every single time. The B-2s from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, piloted by Lieutenant William Hepler, who's a big Georgia fan, and Captain Ryan Magner, Purdue grad. Here we go, the playoff semifinal, Rose Bowl number 104. Cyber drives it deep. A touchback. They take it to Anderson. Mayfield rolls out, puts it over the middle. And the catch is made by Dimitri Flowers, the H-back, with first down yardage to the 36. He is a weapon in this offense. Yeah, can really crank it up. If they make a first down, expect tempo. Play action across the middle. Flowers again, rumbling into Georgia territory. And in a place devoted to Flowers, Dimitri making an impact early. Tough matchup down in this area. Second and eight. Play action. Flip to the end zone. Touchdown. The Sooners strike quickly. Marquise Hollywood Brown. Chubb on the toss. Into traffic. They get a good block on the edge. And Chubb turning for a first down. Running through tackles out near midfield. Big Isaiah win. The tackle sprung him. Trying to match up up front. First carry for Sonny Michelle, who cuts it back, in the clear. Michelle barrels down inside the Oklahoma 30, and already this Georgia tandem flexing. They fake it to Michelle from look downfield, now checks down, delivers a strike, complete for a first down to Wims inside the 15. Trimage, still able to squeeze it in there. Take it to Michelle again. Fromm looked over the middle. Now dumps it down. Caught. Touchdown. Michelle out of the backfield. And the dogs answer quickly. Two winner. Four for four in the Sooners opening drive. And sling it out. Out of the backfield. And this is the very fleet Marquise Brown around the edge. Second and ten. Baker just turns and looks at Anderson. There was some kind of... Deception there. Anderson off and running a stiff arm into Georgia territory. And Rodney Anderson rumbles down in the red zone. They're keyed in on six. Whatever he can do to try to get them off balance. Playing at warp speed. Anderson again barrels into the end zone. Two drives, two touchdowns for OU. More advanced than Drew Brees was at this stage of his Purdue career. Chuck cuts it back. In a strong gain, first down yardage across the 35 before Parnell Motley wrestled him down. Michelle and Swift in the game. From from the pocket has good protection and flips off a completion for a first down into Oklahoma territory to Warner. The young tight end has been busy early. Play action. From again, good protection, flips it off underneath, and it's Charlie Warner again, his uncle Scott, and a Hall of Famer for Georgia, a defensive back, and only six catches coming in, but already a few today. For the Sooners, Okoronkwo. They haven't pressured from yet. This time he backpedals, they affect the throw, flips it to Michelle, but the Sooners are all over the running back there. Motley made the tackle short of first down yardage. Drives it, but it drifts and misses wide left. Man to man. Mayfield looks left, delivers a strike, and that's Brown beating man coverage out near midfield. C.D. Lamb check at the true freshman with his first catch. Yes, the pretender sign. We know all about it, Chris. And three more quarters to go, though, Tom. Baker begins the second quarter with play action, and it's Andrews the tight end. A tough matchup for Lorenzo Carter, the line. 83 yards and a touchdown. Dogs crowd the line. This is Anderson, who breaks free. Rodney Anderson in the clear, headed for the end zone. One yards. You said it, Kirk. This offense about a lot more than number six. My, what a start for the Sooners offense and Baker Mayfield. From and Georgia back to work. And Sonny Michelle breaks free. Michelle in the clear. A foot race. What an answer from Georgia. 75 yards. Mayfield. Looks downfield. Now fires over the middle. Andrews, the tight end, goes up and makes a leaping catch into Georgia territory. He Trey Sermon, number four, is in the game. 
As there's Andrews in the backfield along with Flowers and Baker Mayfield keeps it. Quarterback keeper around the right end. Terrific design on the play. Easy first down inside the 30. And now they motion Brown. Fake it to him. Flip it short. Bedette in traffic. It's Lamb. Check it down to the 15-yard line. They're just one step ahead of Georgia. Receiver and it sets up a third and seven. Mayfield traps. Sack for the first time. Tyler Clark, the sophomore defensive tackle. Inside 40, 11 of 12 this season. This from 38. And no problem for the junior. It's a bad angle himself, and just like that, they're out of their own shadow, their own end zone. Pressure and a sack on first down. Not fooled by the play action was the safety, Stephen Parker, who came flying in. That's the Sooners' first sack. Third and 17. Good protection. They flip it off short. Michelle trying to escape, but he's going to be spun down at midfield. Well short of the first down. That time Murray wrapped him up. Sermon's in the game, and he's got the football, and he's got a crease. The freshman off and running. Gets a downfield block. Barrels ahead. A physical finish to the run, and that fires up the OU sideline. Play clock winding down in this third and nine play. It's a screen. Brown in the clear. The sprinter cuts back. Hollywood Brown slips down inside the 15. It's a reverse. Lamb throws it to the quarterback, and Mayfield catches a touchdown pass. Timeouts, the different looks from the Sooners. Give that one to Riley and the Sooners. Ooh, they just booted along to, the ground try to here. Try it, but that's a, Georgia got a chance here, maybe. From rolls out, they do fire it short, and the catch is made. No out of bounds, and now they'll have to try to spend a timeout. Smart sprinting down there. Godwin well, couldn't get out. One. Steps into it. And drives it. Wow. Hot rod. Comes up with three. That's a Rose Bowl record. And Oklahoma made to pay for that squib kick just before halftime. And is back deep out of respect for him. They squib kicked at the end of the first half, but that was poorly executed by Seibert, and it gave Georgia a chance at the field goal. Hartman takes this punt and will sprint to the edge. Gets some blocks. Miko Hartman swerving, curving. And knocked down finally at midfield. He is a dangerous guy. He's speedy and he's shifty. Football and wearing teams down up front in the second half. Just the 12th running play of this game for the Dogs, but they've had great success. Chubb not down yet. Turning and chugging to the end zone. Anderson in the backfield. Dogs press it up close. And Mayfield, instant pressure. Did he escape? No! Sack back at the 15. Lorenzo Carter. The field again snaps it at two. Has time. Now running out of time and he'll be dropped. Good coverage. Jonathan Ledbetter of the Dogs. And second and 18 pressure again. Back to back sacks. Tyler Clark has been a beast and DeAndre Walker came in the blitz. Let's Mayfield have him third and 27. Well, a safe call. Anderson this time is going to be dragged down. And what well, you wonder, an unheralded guy like Tyler Clark just stepping up on this enormous stage and making plays for the Dogs defense uh, tonight. The Dogs running it back to work from the 29. A first down throw. Pressure from the backside. They get the ball out quickly. And Terry Godwin, a first down catch to the 40 in this second half. And Brown back on play action. Has time. Delivers. Over the middle. Complete. Wims again, a fingertip grab inside the Sooner 45. Directing traffic, running out of time. They just get the playoff. Michelle in the clear. Sony Michelle barrels down into the end zone. The hat trick for number one. Mayfield has time this time. Overshoots Andrews and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominic Sanders. And the veteran safety scampers down inside the 10. The game's first turnover.
sets up the dogs in scoring position. Plum looking for the end zone. Delivers. Touchdown. Wims gives the dogs the lead. Swift goes in motion. Sooners bring pressure, and they knock the quarterback down. Ball comes out. It's rolling around, and Oklahoma grabs it on the sidelines. No signal of incomplete that I've seen yet. Now they're going to say the arm was coming forward, and this ACC crew is going to confer. He almost flipped it like a pitch, but I think it's intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. Number 11 against the offense. Penley has lost it down. Fourth down. And, and Sermon in the backfield. Now Sermon motions out. And it's Anderson testing the left side, breaking free. He is tough to tackle, and he's got first down yardage. Very many big plays tonight. Mayfield takes the downfield shot. Deep ball. Catch made by C.D. Lamb. And he got single coverage, and they pitched it down there. He beat Tyreek McGee. A play for the Sooners. At 36 yards, is that the play that can spark this offense? And now pump fake, and Mayfield takes off into the secondary, weaving down into the red zone. Same play they called earlier back up near their own end zone, where it's a quarterback design counter. Mayfield from the pocket. Still got it. Flips it to the end zone. Touchdown! Dimitri Flowers! Something that they use. Play action. Rom throws it along the sidelines. Say he loves that route. Throws it so well. Allen, we've seen in the past from Oklahoma's defenses. Around the end, Michelle strung out. And hit hard, loses the ball. It's out. The Sooners have it. Steven Parker. A scoop and score! Execution now. Sooners bring pressure. Ron gets it out. He has a man. Godwin escapes and is wrestled down at the 40. So the young quarterback beat the blitz that time. You understand defense. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Rom has to scramble, flips it off short. Michelle in space, makes a man miss, and is spun down inside the 25 by Will Johnson. On the backfield. Sooner shows some pressure, but back off. Rom steps up, delivers a strike across the middle. Catch made by Godwin, knocked down inside the 10. First and goal. Shift around. Overset Chubb. Left. Chubb, it's the wild dog and the running back. Direct snap, cuts back and scores. From the pocket, Mayfield loops it downfield. It's incomplete. He overled Anderson out of the backfield. Now it's fourth down, 24 seconds to go. Georgia was down 17 in the first half. They reeled off 24 straight. They took the lead, but a scoop and score by the Sooners, Stephen Parker, changed the complexion. Georgia able to drive down and tie the game and then deny Mayfield, and we go to overtime. Two. Big cushion, you're right. From the pocket, delivered. Incomplete, it was off the hands of Isaac Nauta. This from 38 in the lead. Knocks it right through. But Mayfield can win the game and send the Sooners to Atlanta and the championship game now with a touchdown. And off. Smallwood. End around. Doesn't get there. Roquan Smith rose up and the Butkus Award winner made a huge play. Knocks it coolly through into the net. Where's an advantage where I can win one-on-one? -on -one? Andrews in the slot to the right. Dogs jump off. It's a free play for Mayfield who flings into the end zone. Intercepted. The pass is picked off by DeAndre Baker, but the dogs jump offside. And Mayfield, I think, knew he had a free play. He sure did, Chris. Offsides. Defense number 13. 
five yard penalty. First down. Not out of the red zone. You flip it short. Anderson hit behind the line as Roquan Smith makes another huge play. Mayfield has time, flips it short. Brown, a long way to go. He slips one tackle, spins, but is stopped at the 10-11 yard line, and it's fourth down. Deflected, blocked. The dogs do it again. I think Lorenzo Carter got in there. He's got such great length. It's 6'6". I think he was able to get the penetration, get up in the air, and get his right hand on the ball. How about that? A senior for the dogs. The offense. Watch him get up in the air right there. Full extension. Yes, he gets his hand on that to prevent it from going through. They left him a gap. Carter took advantage. We mentioned how good Georgia's been at this situation. Third time this year, they block a field goal in close, and now a field goal wins it for Georgia. Any points win it, and the Dogs would head back to Atlanta for a shot at the championship. Chubb scored a touchdown earlier on a direct snap. Now it's Michelle's turn, running all the way. Gets to the edge. Sonny Michelle will send the Dogs home to the championship game. Just like that, the Sooners' season ends, and the Dogs can dream big about a national championship. It would be their first since 1980. Sony Michelle, four touchdowns to offset a crucial fumble, but the final word in the highest scoring Rose Bowl ever, and its first overtime ever. To Maria Taylor. All right, coach. Your third block field goal of the season results in your team going to a national championship game. How do you describe the way this game ended? What a game. What an atmosphere. You know, my heart goes out to the Oklahoma team because these guys played their tail off, and so did ours. Nobody ever quit. Everybody fought hard. So proud of these kids and seniors, man. I mean, they never quit. Let's talk about those seniors. Lorenzo Carter, he gets the block field goal, and then you put it in the hands of a senior running back. I mean, what does it mean? These guys came back for this moment, Coach. Impressive. Character, integrity, proud of them, man. This is a great university, and these kids pulled their tail off. And your second year as the head coach at your alma mater, you're taking them to a national championship. Let that soak in and tell me what it means to you. Go Dogs. Fourth, and don't forget the fumble that he had. Look at the blocks. By Nada, good block downfield. Look at look at the quarterback, yep. Jake Fromm, picking up a block. But remember, Michelle was the one who fumbled the ball that Oklahoma picked up and scored. How fitting that he's able to put that in the end zone. And of course, there's a reaction from Baker Mayfield. We'll never wear a Sooners jersey again. Post game coverage, including the trophy presentation over on ESPN2. I'm going to shift it now momentarily to the the second semifinal, Clemson and Alabama from the All-State Sugar Bowl. An absolute classic in Pasadena this evening. The Dogs headed home. Who are they going to meet? The Tigers of the Crimson Tide. We're about to find out as we send you to New Orleans. And guess who has come into the game? The guy who just had the interception. 300-pound defensive tackle to Ron Payne. Yeah, this is their goal line set. They're going to throw oh, they're to him. pass to him. Well, we heard so much about that with the way the game ended last year when they made up. Oh, and another one! It's Matt Williams! Williams! Pick six! Time!
side, rolling. Matt Wilson takes it home. You're a business major, you're a smart kid in school, apply that to the football field, and he is doing that tonight. They only have 10 scholarship seniors. John Parker Wilson is one of them. Nobody else in big-time college football has played fewer. And this pass intended for Jones in the touchdown. Are you kidding? The roll. John Parker Wilson. One of the stars of this game, he was spectacularly good. He was. Great decision-making, great accuracy, throwing the football. Never got flustered, never lost his composure. Three and a half remaining. Play action, McCarra. Deep left side, got a man open, got the touchdown, Amari Cooper! Mitchell, number 26, bottom of the screen. Murray, no, he's got a man! Seconds, they're going to get two throws to the end zone. They can clock this ball right now, meaning ground it, or they can run a hurry up play. The clock has started. 12 seconds to go. Murray got it, but the clock is running. That's the one thing he didn't want to do. Game over. Alabama faces Notre Dame for the national championship in Miami. Oh, they come after it, they blocked it. Touchdown, Alabama. Minka Fitzpatrick, number 29. Well, that's about as calmly. Something about next week as well. Georgia is at Tennessee next yeah, week. Yeah, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eddie Jackson. Jackson still running. Looks for a block. Gets it. To the five. Touchdown, Alabama. Made it to this thing, and he might be the next big one. Well, that's going to do it. Here before, but never on opposite sides. A personal relationship eclipsed by a century of history. And now the student is home, looking to start his own legacy. Will the student become the master? <laughs> if so, then it begins tonight. Yeah, you can call it bias. Or what history calls it, dominance, supremacy, dynasty, damn straight. It's volatile and uncertain, intense and unknown, difficult and ultimate. It's about how much it means, why it matters, when it counts, and from where it comes. You know what, man? Enough talk. It's game time. <laughs>
Uh, college football mecca, Atlanta. Frigid tonight. Her streets eerily quiet. But inside the modern marvel of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, it's overheated, raucous, and ready for the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. The Georgia Bulldogs, hungry to taste the school's first title in 37 seasons. The Alabama Crimson Tide driven to strengthen a decade-long dynasty with a fifth title in nine years. And welcome, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit. We are so proud to bring you the championship game, year four of the playoff era. It's about to get crazy in here. This <laughs> is going to be wild with Georgia just down the road here, Kirk. Georgia and Alabama separated largely by the Chattahoochee River, but like neighbors that don't visit each other that often, just three previous meetings in a decade. They're both from the SEC, and we know that's a flashpoint for quite a few of you, offsetting what was otherwise a, a down year for the conference. About half the programs in this league are in transition or turmoil, but you can't argue these two teams earned their way here. Yeah, it's not really about necessarily looking at it as a conference. When you look at the bracket, it's about the four best teams. I think a lot of us agree they put the four best teams in. At the end of the day, Georgia's got to beat Oklahoma in double overtime, which they did, and obviously Alabama showed a different attitude, healthy, attacking the line of scrimmage, and they took care of Clemson, and so here we are. Two teams that happen to be from the same conference in a year where the SEC collectively is down, but these two teams won in the playoff. They deserve to be here tonight. Yeah, Saban wants that same angry energy tonight. All four championships he's won in Alabama have come with Kirby Smart on his staff. But now in year two at Georgia, Smart is trying to do what no former Saban assistant has done. Pull that sword out of the stone. Break the hold that Saban's had on his ex-assistants. McIlwain and Dooley couldn't do it at SCC Rivals. Yeah, Dooley with his orange pants in Knoxville <laughs> couldn't get it done. You look at the rest of these coaches, some of them defense. Will Muschamp, Mark D'Antonio, Jimbo Fisher this year in this stadium with Florida State. Of course, he's now at Texas A&M. And there's Kirby saying, all right, I'm ready to take my shot right here. He's in the weight I, room, hasn't he? He has, doing some squats, it looks like. Zach Brown and his band, Georgia Natives, and big fans of these guys. Bulldogs is the higher seed given the choice, and they're going to wear the home red. A wardrobe change from the SEC championship game and the Rose Bowl. There's the defensive leader, Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith, Nick Chubb, both guys, a lot of these players on this Georgia team deciding to come back for their senior year to have an opportunity maybe to make a run like this right here. Veteran team, couple dozen seniors on this roster. Saban and his teams, no matter how big the game, their entrance is usually businesslike, something you see on Sundays. It wasn't that way in the Sugar Bowl. Well, they played with an edge that they're going to try to duplicate tonight, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Felt disrespected with being questioned whether or not they should be in the playoff or not, not to mention Clemson beat them last year in the championship. They were out for... Out, not really on a mission last week. Saban used home field in the Superdome to win a championship game over Oklahoma. Overcame one when his Alabama team went and beat LSU, smothered them in 2011. Number seven. The line drive kick just barely. A touchback at down plays beat tonight. Dogs need six. From straight back, pressure up the middle. Hit as he throws. A downfield shot. And coming back. Wins a battle, but it's 
picked off as Tony Brown went up and just took it on him. He's mobile, has a strong arm, and he's a winner. And the handoff, Robert Foster ends around, slips a tackle, gets the edge, and the Tides move the chain. Died. That time they were able to outflank the Georgia defense. Hurts still got it, flips it short. Calvin Ridley, the Tides' best receiver, was open and dances out of bounds near the marker before Malcolm Parrish. The leader of the defense. Hurts, a design run. This is what he does best. Muscles into the secondary and the Tide set up at the Dogs 31. It's just a quarterback power defensive scheme as they are their own. Straight back. Escapes. Makes a cut, and Jalen Hurts again. First down in the red zone. Ridley alone up top. Real difference maker in the passing game for Alabama. Parrish is on him. Hurts looking that way. Kurt throws it for the end zone, but over the head of Ridley. And Parrish had fallen. After the scramble. Oh, they're going to put him on the move. Hurts retreats, chased, flips it, incomplete. A changeup, and that was the speedy, and I mean speedy, early misses from this range. The timing was off, and that was ugly from the start. Guy out of the Sugar Bowl had a pick, and then had a touchdown reception right after it. Third and 15. Tied, rush four. Brown has time. Nice throw downfield in the traffic ball. Tipped in the air and incomplete again. He was looking for Wims and Deontay Thompson got a hand. Empty backfield. Hurts is keeping a straightforward call, but it goes backwards as the dogs swarm. Jonathan Ledbetter off the edge. Just Sliding it. The uh, protection to the right. From. From the pocket, delivers a high throw, it's caught, finally, that's Javon Wims after a couple of drops, makes the catch. Third and 20. Got to hurry. Just get it off. And it's a third and long run, can Michelle create some magic, he gets the edge and tight ropes into Alabama territory! Sony Michelle, Rose Bowl hero, makes the first big offensive. Down here at the bottom along with a tight end. And it's Michelle to Fromm's right. They pick up the pressure. Another third down run. Didn't want to risk perhaps taking a sack and moving the field goal attempt back. And Blankenship does what Papanastas could not. What? Last two rushes, no gain for Hertz. Third and six from the pocket. Hit as he throws, and it's underthrown, but Ridley is not going to be able to come up and get it. Hurts picks himself up off the rug. The pressure caused that incompletion by... And second and five. Eason pulls it. Makes a little cut. Shows some elusiveness. And the quarterback has a first down at the 45. Receiver Chris Wims, number six to the left, hasn't caught a pass yet. Brown took a look downfield. Now checks it down. It's complete. And it's Riley Ridley. Little brother making a big impact before Calvin does. Dogs are set up. Run play into a good run play. Not just run to pass. Run to run. Comes the blitz late. Dogs need six. They're in field goal range from downfield. There is Wims going up and making his first catch. He beat. From flushed. Backpedals and delivers a dangerous throw over the middle. He was knocked down. Michelle frustrated that first and goal. Three plays netted nothing. And Blankenship remains perfect on the season inside of 40 yards. Another look, Kirk. Let's go back and look at Terrell Lowe's guard. They're trying to get lined up. E4. Hurts. Trying to create something, buying time, runs to the sideline as it just throws it into the bench. So the dogs flushed him out. Trent Thompson. Making the adjustments. They clock at five. Tied rush four. Prom gets it out. He's thrown behind Ridley, who comes back and makes a nice hand catch. It's a first down. That underneath the throw. On third and ten. It's another run. And Michelle's free. Sony Michelle has been the answer on third and long against this Bama defense. From 
Steps up. Escapes. A lot of room. And from no slide. He's going to take a shot. First down in the red zone. Target. Don't forget the tight end. Nauta is also off to the left. Got a hurry. Play action from Fires. Down inside the five. Slipping away and reaching for the end zone is Godwin. Stop him. Okay. Yep, Fromm motions out. It's Miko Hardman instead. The receiver comes in. They hand it. Nope, they keep it. And sprinting to the edge. The dogs. Barking in the first half. And here it is, Tua Tungvaloa, a true freshman from Hawaii, gets the second half start. He keeps it. He's a nifty runner, not quite as powerful as Hurts, but he's in there because he's throwing it. He, he is fear. By the way, there's three true freshman wide receivers in the game for Bama as well, as Tungvaloa tries to dodge the rush, cannot escape, sacked by Roquan Smith, the Butkus Award winner. QB change. Same. Hoping, Kirk, that someone on this defense can, can make a play. A takeaway. The spark Bama. Second and 13. From flips it in the flat. And in heavy traffic. Swift tries to cut back. And back-to-back -back losses. So the tie defense pushing the dogs back. Iser. 10 crew missed that one. That's a huge difference. At a first down. Third and 21. Just the safe play and the handoff to Swift. Crowd is still up in arms. Dogs don't pressure. And Hungabaloa has all night hit hard, spinning around, trying to escape and create, and now he's in the clear. The freshman shows some toughness, creating a desperately needed third. Bama in Georgia territory at the 44. First down throw, a slant, high, caught. Robert Foster, the senior, just his 12th of the season. But throws right behind him. Screen, rugs, through freshman to true freshman, and he busts down inside the 20. It's near the marker. Boy, just a dip. Get the ball out quickly. Second and one, throwing again, slant, low, and it's rugs. The freshman going down again. First and goal, Alabama. Throwing again. End zone. Touchdown! Henry Ruggs! We got a freshman quarterback duel in Atlanta, and the Tide are back in it. Where does that come from, Kurt? You're in high school a year ago. You haven't played a meaningful snap all, all year. Season. You're mopping up all year. Game. The quarterbacks not only hitting big plays, avoiding the disastrous play. Third down right here for Fromm. Delivers under pressure. Downfield. Caught. Hardman. A foot race. Escapes and scores. That's good advice. He hasn't been under fire much in meaningful games, as we said. Rolls, flips it high, into traffic, intercepted. DeAndre Baker made the young fellow pay for a mistake. Need any points out of this drive, it's a three-score game. Fromm, again, trusted to throw in first down. Batted in the air, picked off. The tide respond, Raekwon Davis. It's another big man interception by Bama. And they're at the 40. You know, Payne didn't come up with the interception, but he was involved in causing it. This is a crazy... And Gabaloa pressured, flushed, has space, and unable to escape Roquan Smith, but got nine. Oh, he is. And they find him here. And Gabaloa chase, delivers, incomplete. Flying off the edge to pressure was the linebacker DeAndre Walker. It's fourth down. Uh, earlier, this from a yard longer. 
Not the prettiest, but it's crucial. The Tide able to cash in Davis's interception, but only for three. Or if they don't start respecting his ability to run. Top receiver Wims out of the game on third and six. Brom has plenty of time and delivers a high throw, and the catch is made by Riley Ridley. So his big brother. Michelle is the back. Ridley's out there on the right on third and six. Brom has a clean pocket and delivers. A strike ball comes out. Not held it long enough. Levi Wallace just ripped it away from there. Him. Reggie Carter, Roquan Smith. Late pressure. Hunga Bailoa throws it out there. It's caught. But Roquan Smith knocks down Scarborough. Just like he... From between the tackles again, and Michelle busts loose across the 40, and the dogs are just driving it right at them. The drive all Sony so far, but he steps out and Chubb spells him and powers up the middle. This has to be eating Saban and Pruitt alive. From pressured sacks right up the middle was Raquan Davis who made the pick, and now that drive killer. Great coverage in Harris, their leader, no relation. And Najee getting a turn. That time they fake it to him. Tungavaloa has lots of time and a big cushion for Cam Sims, who makes the catch. Still fighting, spinning, takes a big shot at the 46 from Trent. Puts in a true freshman, hasn't played any meaningful snaps all year, and it's kind of sparked this Alabama offense. And now Harris is the four tailback, bounces it. Najee Harris! In the clear, a powerful run, still battling and slung out inside the 10 by Roquan Smith. Rugs very good at the field goal block when they got Oklahoma's. Don't come after that one. And Papanastos able to curl it through. One in there, DeAndre Swift in the slot to the left. And it's Hardman who's had a big night on the end around. They don't. Contain him at the edge. That'll drop again. This was the look that scored the touchdown. This time they give it to Michelle up the middle and nothing doing. The tide rise up and stop him a yard short. Fourth down. Dave. Damian Harris comes in motion. Tunga Villoa fakes the run and now he's going to flip it to Harris in the flat. Makes a man miss. And Damian Harris, after a frustrating night, spins across the 50 into Georgia territory. We have two plays to get it. Gavaloa, a downfield shot, and here comes a flag. A battle on the edge between Parrish and freshman Devontae Smith. Oh, it's been very productive with Tungabaloa in there. The lefty fires downfield. Judy goes up. Freshman to freshman again, and the tide set up inside the 15. It's swipe right at the last seven. Day yep. for Baker. Keeper. Tungabaloa cuts it back. He's shifty. Down to the six. They got a nice Third push. Short. Got a nice push there. For Damian Harris is blastered in the backfield. Trenton Thompson is having a game tonight. That play for late in the game. Play you haven't called. Tungabaloa, plenty of time, surveying the field, fires end zone, touchdown! Calvin Ridley finally makes an impact! The superstar receiver waited all night for that moment. He'd been targeted, he'd been missed. That time, Tungabaloa coolly It's not of the tight end, motioning in. Time again. High throw, incomplete. Tied, rushed four, and that was delivered over the head of his receiver. Fourth down. Lightlock winding down. Harris 
has the handoff, fights off a high tackle and just barrels out across the 45. Barely got that playoff. That was real close. 127 pounds. Tied with tempo, testing the metal in this dog's defense. Hunga by a sideline round. That's easy pitch and catch to Ridley. Be careful. Calvin Ridley starting to get involved now. I, 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 again, I'm very surprised. It, it looks like we have a... Run all the way. Chase down at the 25. Keeper. Hunga by Loa. Lowers the head. Shows the power. And gets a first down. He just ran over the senior... Also making checks. Chubb met. And battles for just a few yards. You got to believe in your offensive line to test the front of the tie yeah. on that play. Chubb behind the fullback pain. He's got it. Cannot get the corner. Levi Wallace stopped him. It's going to be third down. Four to Riley Ridley, number eight. Now it's Michelle in the game. Third and six. Pressure, flush, sacked way back at the 35-yard line. It will be a very long field goal attempt. Hot Rod just slides it through. And say he's earned that jumping around way out on the field. Gesturing to his offense. Tunga Bailoa. Dancing around. Circling back. Drops! A disastrous first down play. Devin Bellamy got him back at the 42. The play, throw it away. Get outside of the pocket and play on second and ten. That's his youth right there. Think about Loa trying to make up for it. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown! Alabama wins! We told our team that this game wouldn't be decided by past traditions or, or anything else. It was going to be decided by performances that were happening on the field. And our guys performed on the field, competed. You know, I, I can't say enough about the remarkable senior class. These two young men sitting, sitting next to me, they meant more to Georgia than yards. A lot of heart and soul, a lot of fire. Sonny Michelle came over and talked to the group several times during the game, inspired those guys. But in overtime, we didn't finish when we had to, and Alabama did. And to give them credit, but I think everybody can see that Georgia's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I'm very proud of this team and this university, and we're not going anywhere.